Right. So, um, I was supposed to play a World Cup match uh, this morning, World Cup Pool D, Chess Pats World Cup. Unfortunately, that got cancelled uh, against the Chess Pats of York, so I don't know what's going to happen now uh, with this course and uh, whether or not I'll go through to the next round. Uh, I know that if I if I won this match, I would have had a good chance to go through, but we'll see what, what happens now. Be that as it may, I decided to practice some of my uh, Sicilian Dragon lines. I haven't played the Sicilian Dragon in a while, so we'll look at the uh, the Dragon lines at the moment. Um, the Fianchetto variation, the Levin Fitch variation, Classical variation and the Yugoslav attack. Uh, we'll start with the Fianchetto variation. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. Okay, there's two variations in the Fianchetto variation, uh, vari uh, two Fianchetto variations that I'm going to look at. A 10 move variation and a 12 move variation. So we'll start off. So uh, obviously it's the Sicilian. Um, I believe d6. I know, I know. Knight c6 is the move that that is preferred, but d6 is the traditional way of playing it. And then c takes d. Um, and now you play your knight uh, to f6, attacking the pawn on e4. That's currently undefended. So white will have to defend the pawn, which he does. This now allows. Uh, black to play g6 and get ready to fianchetta his uh, dark squared bishop. Now the fact that um, white played g3 indicates that white is planning to fianchetta his uh, light squared bishop. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure of the move order but these two moves need to be played. I am going to take my bishop out first. That is wrong. I should have played the knight out first. Okay. So there we have it. As I said, I haven't looked at these lines in a, in a fair bit. So now it's the bishop and castle. No, you take the knight. <laughs> well, that is good to know. Now we do it. Yes. Okay. So the whole idea is when white uh, intends to fianchetto his uh, light squared bishop and castle to get this sort of a king's Indian attack position, you've got to pop out your knight to c6 and get rid of his knight on d4. I suppose now I can just simply play queen to c7. Yes, that's the move. Okay, this is fairly unambitious way that white can handle the dragon while he's aiming to steer the game towards positional waters when he does this. Okay, so, so this is cool. So how it works with chessable is that it, it gives you an opportunity to practice your moves. I'm now again in this situation. What do I do? I looked at these two moves. Uh, both needs to be played, but it's important. Move order is extremely important. So, so obviously the correct way to play is to bring your knight out to, to c6 and then with the idea to take, to capture the knight on d4. Uh, this is what we will have to remember in this Fianchetto variation. Fianchetto, Fianchetto, uh, I suppose it's a matter of pronunciation. Doesn't really matter. Right, so now let's look at the second Fianchetto variation line. It's a 12 move line. And let's see what the differences are between these two lines. So we start out the exact same way. This is normal Sicilian. Attack the pawn on e4. He's defending it. This gives us an opportunity to play g6. Now white decides what defense he wants to play. And the fact that he's playing g3 indicates that he's going to play the Fianchetto variation. And this is where we have to, it's imperative, bring our knight out. So now in this variation, Black is, uh, white decided to run away with his knight. He doesn't want to want me to trade knights. So this allows me just to continue with a plan. Castle. And now, this light square bishop can be developed. Maybe bring the rook over. This looks sensible. Maybe bring the rook over to c8. Sensible development. Now we can take take and just pop the knight on e5 so this makes sense 
There we go. Yeah, so I remember that line. So these are the two Fianchetto lines. Uh, so let's go back. And um, just look at the first line again. I'll just do uh, every line twice. And that gives us an opportunity, you know, to, to just reinforce it. So what we start out to play is a normal Sicilian. And the intention is to play the dragon. And the dragon is obviously where you bring your knight out and your fianchetto. So this move, knight f6, attacks the e-pawn that's undefended. White defends it. This allows us a tempo to play g6. And this is the move, g3 by white, indicates that he's going to play the fianchetto variation. And this is where we have to pop out this knight and, if possible, capture the knight on d4, which we will do right now. And black is absolutely fine. Black is absolutely fine in this opening. Alright, so the next one. The next line we look at is this uh, 12 move line where white runs away basically with his knight from d4 because he doesn't want the knight to be captured. So we will start out with the same Sicilian moves. Very standard. Attack the pawn, it's undefended. Uh, he defends it, this allows us the opportunity to play g6, he plays g3, indicating the fianchetto variation, which means we've got to now try and get rid of that knight. Knight runs away, allows us an opportunity to fianchetto our bishop and castle, and just simply bring our light squared bishop to d7, bring the rook into c8, simple developing moves, taking control of the half open file, we'll exchange a pair of knights, and just pop this knight up. Uh, on uh, e5 and if he wants to attack this knight it's it's fine the knight um, what will happen if he attacks the knight so by the way so it opens up his king so it will allow a check and then the knight can go where after the check let's say check king moves over this knight is still attacked Knight can pop over there. So we can either, if the knight gets attacked, pop the knight over to c4 and it can come back to b6 if needs be. Or we can pop in a check, but if we do that, we take the second square away from the knight. So that's obviously something to be considered. Right. Let's move on to the next uh, variation. We just looked at the Sicilian Sicilian Dragon, uh, where White chooses to play the uh, Fianchetto variation, where he Fianchettos his uh, kingside bishop. And what we now do is we go back and we go look at the Eleven Fish variation. Now the Eleven Fish variation is where is where White plays uh, the move. What is it? F F four. Let's just have a look. Uh, yes, F4 is what White plays with 11 fish. And uh, we'll just play the normal Sicilian. Capturing, attacking the pawn on E4. He's defending it, allows us to play G6 to go into the Sicilian. But White decides he's going to play F4. And he is basically saying to us, I'm playing the 11 fish. I believe this is our cue to bring out our knight. To, uh, c6 now we continue the plan we castle now the slight squared bishop can be developed can be developed to g4 but it will be kicked it can also be developed to e6 and d7 the question is which one Okay, bishop g4. So you take it out to the to g4, and the question is, will you just take the the, the knight? Well, why didn't play that? Uh, rook over. Take the half open file. Okay, so this is the better move, to just to pop the bishop. And I suppose you always got the opportunity to to just get rid of this defensive knight if if 
white, you know, wants to kick it away. You can't really drop back because you'll get trapped. So just, that's just something to look out for. Okay, the second living fish line that we're going to look at uh, is uh, this one. Kicking off, normal Sicilian moves, and these becomes these moves become really uh, ingrained in your subconscious mind. This is the eleven fish variation. So that's the cue when uh, white plays f4. Now we have the opportunity to take this knight, and I believe that is wrong. <laughs> okay. And now he runs away. And now we can develop the light squared bishop to put pressure on the knight. Bring the rook over. No, queen c8. Okay, this is important. I have to remember this because it's all about the g4 square. It's all about the g4 square. Okay. Black intends knight to g4. That's the intention on the next move. Trading off white's dark squared bishop. Suppose he means the light squared bishop. Takes, takes. Oh, unless obviously you take the dark squared bishop if it gets defended. Okay, so that's the idea. The idea here for black is to play knight into g4, uh, attack the dark squared bishop and trade it off. Alright. We shall. Oh, come on. Remember that. Okay. Right, learning theory is uh, sometimes boring, but hey, we gotta do it. Hey, eh? we gotta do what we gotta do. We gotta do what we gotta do. Two more lines. There's uh, four lines in the eleven fish variation that we're looking at, and this is the third line that we're now looking at in the eleven fish. All right, C five, D six. C takes D, knight f6, attacking the, the pawn, pawn gets defended, we play g6, indicating that we want to go into the uh, dragon variation, and white plays f4, indicating that he's going for the eleven fish attack. So in this situation, we are simply going to continue with our plan. The light squared bishop can now come out, I believe, and attack this knight. There we go. There we go. All right. It's um, I haven't looked at these lines in really quite a long time, and I remember most of the moves. I should go back to playing these these lines. So this is the last line in the eleven fish that we will be looking at. Attacking the undefended pawn, he defends. We play g6. What's he gonna do? He's playing the eleven fish attack. We bring our knight out to c6. It gets exchanged in this variation. So now, obviously, white is now trying to exchange queens. Pawn takes, queen takes, king takes. We don't want that. We're going to drop the, the knight back. We're going to take. Okay, first take. Then bishop out. No. Okay. Wow. Not sure I like this. Now the knight will, will probably go back. Yeah. All right. So this is the defensive setup when white in the eleven fish variation decides to trade knights. First, have to bring your dark red bishop out to e7 uh, in order to to get castled and to avoid unnecessary checks preventing you from passing. Okay. I'll have to do this one again. Let's just do this one again. Let's just do this one again. 
So we play the Sicilian Dragon. Normal Sicilian moves, attacking the undefended e pawn. He defends it. We go into the Sicilian Dragon. And this move is the important one. F4 shows us that white chooses to play the Levenfish attack, which forces us to play the knight out. He exchanged knights, which is fine for, for black. We don't want to uh, trade queens, so we are going into this particular variation. Castle, and now we pop our knight back. And from here the knight has got um, scope. From here the knight's got scope. All right, so now moving on, moving on, moving on. The next variation, oops. Oops, oops, oops. The next variation that we're gonna look at is the classical variation. One, two, three, four lines in the classical variation. So, let's go. The classical Sicilian dragon variation. All right, so he's defending the pawn. We go into the dragon. So this is the indication that white is playing the classical variation when he plays his bishop out to e2. This allows us to continue with our plan, bishop to g7. He castles. And I believe before we castle, we can just pop our knight out to c6. Yes. Now we castle. And the question is, what do we do with the light squared bishop? Light squared bishop can get traded on a g4, or we can just simply put it on a d7, which is better because now I believe we can pop the queen on c8 and then have a solid system there. We can exchange. Uh, what is the move now? Just rook over, rook over to c8. Just rook over. A solid development setup. All right, so this is the basic classical variation. Let's go into the second line. And what software are you using for this or website? Ask Fenelle. Fenelle, good question, mate. This is an amazing website called, called uh, Chessable. Chessable.com. You can check it out. It's free to join. Uh, most of it is free. It is, um, I believe, the owner or one of the owners of the site is uh, is a. Uh, Finn's, um, what's Finn's name? <laughs> uh, okay, um, his name escapes me now, but it's, it's a brilliant site. What they do is they put books, chess books, in this format that you can learn it. Uh, so they've got a lot of books on the openings, they've got middle game books, they've got in game books, they've got books on tactics. Some books are free and some books you pay for. And it gives you an opportunity to practice your openings and your middle games and all your tactics uh, in a way that they believe is very important. It's called the, uh, the repetitive learning. So what the software does is it sees which moves you struggle with. Yes, John Bartholomew, thank you very much for that. The software, what the software does is it, um, how's it Percy? What the software does is it picks up what moves you are struggling with in particular lines and it gets you to practice those moves. And there's some settings you can you can change the settings uh, in it you know how how frequently you want it to to review the moves etc so this particular one that we're looking at now is a uh, dragon variation tournament edition which surprisingly is a free resource on uh, chessable and some really great lines solid lines uh, in the dragon so white here is defending and we now go into the dragon and we see what white is doing and the fact that bishop goes to e2 is an indicate indicator of the uh, the classical variation this allows us to continue with our plan we're now going to pop our knight out to c6 so the system is very simple it gives you solid development um, the idea is now bishop d7 and just oh okay e6 interesting so when he pops his knight back, he put pressure on that knight with a bishop. Okay, I get that. Bring the rook over right. So now we've got either rook to c8 or queen to c8 in order to pop into that square with our knight. I believe queen to c8 is better, yes. Because now the knight pops in and we're attacking the dark square bishop and they say no. The better move is rook to d8. Right. Right. Let's have a look at this. We're going to push the deep on. He's jumping in. 
not jump scene. Yes, there we go. Okay, okay, that makes sense. So we put pressure on this knight. Freeing the g1 square for his bishop in case of... Okay, that's why, that's why white moved his king over. Is to free that square for his bishop. For in case the knight pops in there, he's got a runaway square. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. And that is why that is why this move it doesn't work now. So we bring the rook over to g8. Rather, rather bring the rook over to d8. Okay. So it obviously saw now the software saw which moves I had wrong, and it is giving me an opportunity to practice them. And I I should have noticed that he's now creating an escape square for his dark square bishop, so I can't go trade the dark square bishop off. So I've got to have another plan, and this is why the rook comes over. To d8, like that. Alright, let's move on to the next line. I believe there are two more lines. Chess bats are horror! I use chess ball every day too. Percy, well, welcome to the chess bats clan, man. Um, are you in the, are you playing in the chess bats world cup? Uh, Percy, I'll have to check out. I haven't looked at all the uh, groups and who's playing where. Um, I think we. I'm in Group D and we're just finishing up our uh, group matches. Unfortunately, Harry just back to York. Um, just withdrew this morning, so um, we'll see what happens now. Let's see what happens now. Horror. So where would horror be? Just that's a horror. Okay, we're looking at the classical variation uh, of the Sicilian dragon. This is yet another line. We'll see how it differs from the previous two lines that we look at. We pop the knight out to f6 to attack the pawn. White defends the pawn and we go into the Sicilian dragon. And this little move, bishop to e2, we now know is the indication that is that white's playing the classical variation. We're going to bring our knight out next. Can be exchanged? No. Knight runs away. So what what this means is it allows the light square bishop, uh, black's light square bishop, a better square. Usually you put it on d7, but now you can put it on on e6. Okay. And in this variation, the bishop just simply draw, drops back. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking pushing Harry up the board. Yeah. Okay. Knight in. Rook over. No. First you take with the bishop. Okay. You take the knight, you give him double pawns. Now you bring rook over. No, he sits. Aha. Okay, okay. So black does some damage to white's pawn structure. The whole idea is to give um, white double pawns on the b-file. Harrow in England. A recent join. Well, looking forward to um, see you around in the tournaments and play. Um, I've got a funny feeling, Percy, that you are one of the higher rated um, chess patches. Am I correct? <laughs> Am I correct? Probably am. It's a great thing about the Chess Batter Clan, you know, we've got people all around the world from all rating levels. Um, I think the highest rated is Chess Batter USA, uh, aka uh, Camel Clutcher. And now we pop this guy. Uh, yeah. Okay, those are the two moves that I forgot in this. Um, classical variation whenever I looked at the pros you know of in the interviews after chess tournaments they'd always say oh, I forgot about this move and I forgot about this move and I would always think to myself it's chess it's a thinking game how can you forget about a move um, either you think of, of the move or you don't think of the move and in my naivety I didn't realize that these guys are studying these lines of theory 20 30 40 moves deep 
And indeed, when they say, I forgot a move, they actually mean to say, I forgot a particular move in a particular line. I thought it's this move and it was actually another move, or whatever, I forgot. Okay, right. Let's look at the last variation uh, in the classical variation, the last line in the classical variation. I, um, the Yugoslav attack has got so many lines to look at. And I, I know that's in the past where I spent most of my time when uh, I, I prepped this dragon variation. Is in the Yugoslav attack. And there's a position in the Yugoslav where you, Okay, so this obviously is the critical move showing us he's playing classical, the classical line, the classical variation. First, bring the knight out. Um, yeah, in, in, the, in the Yugoslav attack, which we will come to soon, there's a Saltus position, which is the position reached quite frequently. Okay, so now in this variation, he's bringing out his dark squared bishop, but we haven't moved the e pawn yet, so it's not pinned. We could chase it away, but that weakens the king's side. We could just ignore it and develop. Bring our rook over. Well, in this case, we can actually bring the queen over to c8 as well. And then it gives us this square. I'm not sure which is the correct one. Rook to c8 or queen to c8. Got a funny feeling it's queen to c8. Nah, neither. It's neither, it's neither. You offer a trade of knights and you attack. Obviously the... Um, the bishop. Now you bring the rook over. The bishop is getting attacked. So the bishop can either drop back, take the knight, or just simply trade the light squared bishops, which is the better move, or offer the trade. And now we can just prop it up. We can just prop it up, give a nice outpost to the uh, to the light squared bishop. So this is the move that I missed, the knight to a5, and the idea is the c4 square. Obviously, this is this is what it's all about. That c4 square. All right, 1700 fide. Well, that's awesome, man. Where's that blitz, <laughs> Percy? Blitz is my nemesis, my like, Blitz is my nemesis, and in the chess batter format, I mean, I, it's just a nightmare for me because five minutes, five minutes is okay. I can deal with five minutes. Lately, I've practiced some three minutes. I can, I can deal with the three minutes, but when it, when the time limit, I mean, bullet is just a no, no go for me. I mean, bullet is just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a blunder fest. To be, to be quite frank with you. Bullet is just a blunderfest for me. Alright, so let's get to the exciting stuff because you know you, you will get the classical variation I suppose a few times. You will get the the fianchetto variation um, in in the Sicilian dragon but what you get most is the Yugoslav attack. So let's have a look at the Yugoslav attack. And there are quite a few lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 lines and some of them goes over 20 moves deep. The first one is 21 moves. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's just have a look. Okay. So normal Sicilian stuff. Capture, attack the e-pawn. He defends. We go into the Sicilian dragon variation. This is indication of the dragon. And here we go. Bishop. White's bishop to e3 is an indication that he's going to play the Yugoslav attack. We bring our bishop out and this little move, very important for white because he does not want my knight to jump into g4 to trade off his dark square bishop. So now we'll just castle. He's preparing queenside castling. White is preparing queenside castling. We now have to develop the knight and the bishop. I believe 
this is the move. If we pop the bishop to e6, it will allow this trade. But we just can simply develop it to d7 and bring the rook over. We have to watch out for these pawn storming, and this is a nice square. But the the knight has that square, so um, okay. So it was e6. It was e6. It wasn't d7. I wasn't too minds about that. Okay, fair enough. Does the rook now come over, or does the queen come out? Let's just first bring the rook over. No, neither. Knight goes to e5. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know what? In the Yugoslav, this knight from uh, your 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 queenside knight invariably ends up on e5. Got to remember that. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's let's see. Now, I can't remember the lines. Is the queen out first? Queen c8. Wow. Well, as you can see, I am extremely rusty. He's planning to push. Drop back with the knight. There we go. Ah, oh, now it can, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back to me now. Or is it? I think I'm going to allow that. So I've just got to bring the rook over to d8. Now I take. And now we're going to trade the queens. Pop the knight in. Take the king. All right, so that's the line. Okay, this move, Bishop G4. White's move, G Bishop G4, is the least common of three options that White has. The disadvantage of this move is that it leaves the F3 pawn weak. That's true. So, East move, G4. Okay. All right, so this is the... These are so. So let's just see what they say about knight e5. Black brings one of his knights to a better square and attacks the f3 pawn. Fair enough. That's the the weakness. That is the weakness. So you have to prep knight c4 with queen to c8. Oh, come on! I tell you, sometimes. So I, I had four, four moves incorrect in this variation, in this line. Way too much. Way too many, so not way too much. What am I saying? Okay, I think we will get it after a few days. <laughs> after a few days, we'll get there. All right, all right, so that was a harsh reintroduction to the. Sicilian Dragon Yugoslav attack. Let's get back to the next line. Alright, here we go. Standard Sicilian lines. Take, take. Attack the pawn on e4. He defends. We go into the dragon. And this move, bishop to e3, indicates the Yugoslav attack. This allows us just to castle. He has to play pawn there. If he doesn't, you can pop your knight in and just go get rid of uh, the dark square bishop. Do we take the knight now? I believe we do. We take the knight. 
take the knight. Yes. Indeed, we take the knight. We bring the queen out. Can't do this yet. So bring the rook over. Now I can play this. Or do I first bring this rook over? I think I bring this rook over first. And now I can push. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so that one is somewhere in the subconscious mind. Let's go. Next one. This is the indication of the Yugoslav attack, the castle, bring our knight out, develop our bishop. Ooh. Now the difference here is white castle before he developed his large square bishop. And when he does that, I've got to push my deep pawn. I've got to remember that. The d5 square, extremely important. Looking at some lines. Just bats a harrow from England. A lot of chess batters in England. I think the majority of chess batters live in England. Or the UK for that matter. Now I can push my deep one. <sighs> Queen B6 threatens mate, but I think the move is queen c7. Wow! He's now giving up his queen I believe. Oh, bishop f5, there we go, because now we threaten mate. That's right, so he's giving up his queen. Very sharp lines that you can get in the Yugoslav or in the Dragon. This particular variation of the Yugoslav. Alright. All good. Let's go. We're going to the Dragon. He chooses the Yugoslav. He's got to push the pawn to prevent my knight from jumping in. To a castle. Develop the knight. Because he castled before bringing out his dice square bishop, we are going to push our deep pawn. Okay, so previous move we saw, we bring our queen out and he took, uh, and that allowed us to play bishop to f five threatening checkmate and he had to give up his queen so let's see what he does now in this variation he wants to swap queens and we don't right we do not want to swap queens we can threaten mate i suppose with queen to be seven what else can we do best move best move Right, let's have a look. 
Another Yugoslav attack. We'll probably get into the Salter's positions shortly. Going to the Dragon variation. That is an indication of the Yugoslav attack. So we know what we're dealing with. Because he castled, uh, before he brought out his Lights per Bishop, we play d5. He plays his king over. I believe the correct move is now either rook to b8 or pawn a6. I think it's rook b8. Yeah. Rook b8. I don't know what the next move is, I can't remember. It makes sense to develop the light squared bishop. Okay, d take. So we go in for a queen exchange. I did not expect that. You can take or take. I suppose my takes is better. What? You want to swap rooks as well? Okay. Right, so this is the line. So it's a forcing line where we swap queens, we trade queens, that is, and um, here's what it is. Then we trade a pair of rooks. All right, so let's do it. Let's do it. Very interesting. Very interesting. All right, theory, the boring part of chess, but hey. We gotta do what we gotta do, man. We gotta do what we gotta do. Store the stuff in the grey matter. Store the stuff in the grey matter. This is an awesome website. Go check it out, chessable.com. Uh, John Bartholomew is one of the owners of the site. And uh, it's an amazing training tool for chess players around the world. And it's free to join. It's absolutely free to join. A lot of free resources on there really great value for your time great value for your time could just kick the knight I believe that is the move he's gunning for my bishop and I think I'm gonna let him take it if he wants to. My bad bishop for his good night. Any day of the week. Any day of the week. Alright, he's just practicing some Yugoslav lines. <laughs> We're pouring our viewers into oblivion. Which is fine. Which is fine. We gotta do what we gotta do. In life, we've got to sometimes eat the spinach and the broccoli and all that stuff. I draw the line at Brussels sprouts though. No Brussels sprouts. Okay, when he castles, again, before he brings out his uh, light square bishop, you can push your deep pawn. So he dropped back with his queen. That will allow us to push the e pawn. I believe we take with the knight actually. And then we defend with the bishop. Now the queen is coming to c7. And I believe the rook is coming to the d5. No! The rook on f goes to d. The rook does come to the d file, it's just the wrong rook. The wrong rook. Alright, let's go. Cheers, Pat, sir. Harrow! Percy, Percy. 
Thanks for popping by, mate. Thanks for popping by. So take the pawn. Go into the dragon. And that is an indication of the Yugoslav attack. So we just need to keep that in mind. Ah, oh, now the Lightsweet Bishop comes out first, preventing us from pushing the spawn. Now we've got to develop this little bishop. Bring a rook over. This this move is premature, I believe, because now I can actually chase it away with a knight and get rid of it. Give him double pawns. Oh, a6. Got to first have this prophylactic defensive move, a6. Cover the important b5 square. Okay. But this, this just looks nice, man. This just looks nice. Lining up the rook with the king. Okay. Prophylactus, prophylactus. And this, this looks very much like the, the Dragodorf, right? Where you play the Nidorf, you play a6 early on. But the setup finally ends up looking like a Dragodorf. Uh, which is a mixture between the Dragon and the Nidorf. are the two moves. Uh, first knight into e5. Come on, man. Then you bring rook over. Okay. Okay. And that's the Saltus position. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the Saltus position. Alright, I suppose um, the next few lines will all go into the Saltus position. Let's just have a look. I'm not going to explain these moves now because we've I've talked about them numerous times now. That obviously indicates the Yugoslav attacks, just the important thing to remember. And if white does not play f3, then you can pop your knight in and go get rid of that dark square bishop. first what what's the difference in the previous line it wanted me to pop the knight in first and now the rook comes in first I don't get it first that's the move, right prophylactic defense there's the saltus that's the true saltus position right there all right so take 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 yes that's the line he doesn't have to take. Do we ignore this? Yes, we ignore this because we can recapture. The question is, do we exchange knights? I don't think that is the line. I think the move is just simply queen to a5. No. Ah, oh, you take with a knight, of course. Of course. Now you play queen a5. There we go. I knew queen a5 was a move. Very important. You have to take that pawn, eh? It's free. It is a free pawn. Okay, two moves to remember. Two moves to remember here on this line. I knew the rook comes over to the c file before you pop the knight on e5. I mean, knight e5 is very important. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. Hey, that's it. Alright. Wow. Okay, so um, those were the lines that we looked at. The Sicilian dragon, the Fianchetto uh, variation, Lemon Fish variation, Classical variation, and Yugoslav attack. If you learned anything, great stuff. If you didn't, no worries. Thanks for stopping by and uh, see you later. Cheers.